Uh, this colonel is a, a real warrior type guy, and he had a, a degree in uh, plasma physics. And he was also a consultant to NASA, and he was a consultant to uh, people out at the Palos Verdes Nuclear Power Generating Station just uh, west, 50 miles west of Phoenix. And um, there were a couple of things that he mentioned. I, I went up directly to him to ask whether he had ever worked in underground facilities. And I asked him this cold, and he just looked up at me and said, which one? I said, I don't know. You tell me. And he said, well, I used to ride the left. I said, pardon me? I said, what did you say? A lev? Do you mean a mag lev? And he said, yeah, mag lev. And then he started raving about how Clinton knew nothing about this, and Clinton wasn't a military man, and he had no need to know about what was going on underground. And he said the entrance to the system that he took was into White Sands Proving Grounds. The other thing he said was there was a base on the moon. I find that quite astounding. I mean, I'm, I have heard astounding things, not only from this colonel, okay, but also probably the highest rank was a retired three-star general, lieutenant general in the Air Force. And he knew another guy that I was in contact with, and this other guy claims that he worked seven years on the U.S. anti-gravity program. And for a fraction of what he told me, and I've got a tape recorded, is true. Whoa. What a sham the space program is. Because there's another space program going on. A secret space pro program. And that's what I was attempting to find. In fact, you don't have to go too far to find that there is some secret space programs going on because... They had their own shuttles and their own astronaut crews right out here at Vandenberg Air Force Base, unbeknownst to everybody, and they scuttled a $5 billion facility that was housed there at one time. That was back in the 80s. But the kind of space program he was talking about is using a spacecraft that can leave the bounds of our atmosphere and travel to the planet Mars at point eight C. Eight tenths of speed of light. And I said, How do you know that? I've been there, he said. Yes, Bill, could you just elaborate a little more on the uh, trips to Mars that you had mentioned earlier? <clears throat> uh, oh, that this. Uh, <clears throat> this man who told me this, by the way, verified he is. An aerospace engineer. I cannot verify that he's also a physicist except by his writings, and I have some of his papers. And he claimed to work uh, shoulder to shoulder with a race of human like beings just like us. I forgot where he said they were from, if it really matters, but it, it was these people who were guiding him through the he wasn't back engineering so much as he was on uh, trying to explain the physics of what the engineers were doing. He was investigating the, the physics of it with the assistance of these beings, so he claimed. And he worked in underground facilities at Nevada Test Site, Channel 8, Edwards Air Force Base, maybe other places. Um, and when I asked him this question, or I put this question to him, he said that he had been on this craft, had gone to Mars, and I asked him, where, where did you go? Where did you land? And he said, we went underground on Mars. And there was a base there where they landed. And he would not describe the base, who put it there, or whether it was our base, nothing. He shut up about that. But in order to just evoke a little bit more information out of him, I asked the question, are there Martians? And there was a real pregnant pause before he replied, 
And he simply said, yes. And I said, and what do they look like? Now get this, he said, like the ancient Egyptians. Now there's a book out, I find this fascinating, by Graham Hancock, just recently put out, about the connection between the planet Mars and Egypt. Is somebody onto something here? I don't know, but I, I think that's quite a coincidence. Because there were people wandering around the 1950s here in California telling me they had met Martians. And they had olive skin, dark hair, dark complected. I don't know how many of those stories. They were never little grays, they were always human. Yet we don't see any cities on Mars, not the canals. Uh, we know that the atmosphere is carbon dioxide. It's very thin. Uh, where do they live? But we do know that Mars once had a, apparently abundant water on its surface and probably had conditions that could support life. So uh, if there are people on Mars, maybe they do live underground. is president of the American Academy of Dissident Sciences, and that's for studying German involvement in the exploration of the Moon and Mars. Extensive research of this dissident American theories about physical conditions on the Moon, he states he has proven beyond the shadow of a doubt that there is atmosphere, water, and vegetation on the Moon, and that man does not need a space to, to walk on the Moon. A pair of jeans, a pullover, sneakers are just about enough, he says. Everything NASA has told the world about the moon is a lie, and it was done to keep the exclusivity of the club from joining by the third world countries. <laughs> 